Hi, I'm Roberta. Welcome to my kitchen. I'm here today with my friend Audra Morris and she's going to show us how to make nonya curry paste. Mm. Now, lots of interesting ingredients. Just take us through what we have. Okay, so nonya chicken curry is a Peranakan dish. It's traditionally, um, nonyas are actually Peranakan, a Peranakan lady. Baba is a Peranakan man. So we always term this in the, the ladies' terms, you know. So in this nonya curry, we use a lot of fresh aromats, in, you know, meaning the chilies, galangal, and all that. Um, not so much dried spices, although I do put in a little bit of coriander, and brown coriander. That. Yeah. Um, and there's lots of different versions of this, by the way. This is my mom's recipe, and it's very, very heavily focused on the fresh aromats. Thank you so much for sharing your mom's recipe oh. with us. That's very precious. Pleasure, pleasure, <laughs> pleasure. So okay. the fresh aromats being chili. Okay, so you have fresh chilies, and fresh chilies actually give it a really nice vibrant color, mm -hmm. right? And so does the uh, turmeric. Now this is fresh turmeric. We're also used to using dry turmeric, but fresh turmeric has a slightly different flavor, and it's actually really yellow. It's so, a great aroma too, oh, isn't it? Wonderful, wonderful. Um, the other two sort of in the rhizome family is your ginger and your galangal. Mm -hmm. Now galangal, when you look to buy galangal, try and get the really nice pinky ones. Mm -hmm. uh, it can, quite often people sell them really dried and it's really woody. Mm -hmm. So it takes a lot more to actually grade or to actually process it in your food processor. So the softer ones are easier. Correct, yeah. Okay. Um, now ginger, there's two types of ginger. Uh, if we all didn't know, uh, often these days we only find young ginger, so the skin can literally be scraped off. It's really, uh, it's really kind of plump. The old ginger, you'll find the skin is much thicker, so you do have to to, grate, uh, peel. to peel it off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then we've got these beautiful little things called um, candle nuts. Now candle nuts work in the same way as uh, macadamia nuts do. So if you can't find candle nuts, you can replace it with macadamia. Can I tell you something I learned the hard way? Mm. Don't snack on these. No. They give you an upset tummy. No. They're fine once they're cooked, but do not eat them raw. They're actually toxic raw. Mm. So yeah, they, they will make you quite unwell. And what it actually does is it provides that creaminess in the dish. So your curry is not watery. Yeah. And I promise they don't make you sick once they're cooked. No. I've experimented many times. Exactly. <laughs> And then you've got dried chilies. Now with dried chilies, I always, there is a certain type that I buy and it's actually dark, it's long, it's big and it provides the perfect amount of heat so you don't even need to de-seed it. But if you're a little bit sort of um, shy of heat, chili heat, then de by all means de-seed it. I'm going to suggest you take the seeds out the first time you make this yeah. and then if you think, gee, I wish that had a bit more punch, yeah. then next time you leave the seeds in. Because I think Audra's heat level might be a little bit different to my heat level, possibly different to your heat possibly. level. <laughs> now, the thing about chilies as well is always find, if you're doing some, something that's sort of Southeast Asian, always look for the, the Thai brands or the Vietnamese brands. Also, possibly the Indian brands, but don't go for the Chinese brands because the Chinese brands, the chilies, are used for a different purpose. And they yeah. don't have the same heat. They don't have the same heat. It's a very different type of heat. It's more of that um, 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 numbing. It's more of the color. Like the Sichuan dishes. Correct. Yeah. Okay. All right. Then we've got uh, lemongrass. Um, now, I do want to talk about lemongrass a bit. You know, often in recipes you find people saying, you know, strip it right back to the, the white core. Mm -hmm. I actually find it a little bit wasteful. It is. You know, and there's so much here that piece, this top half here people actually throw out. So what I'm going to show you, so if you buy, this is how I treat my lemongrass. So if you buy lemongrass and it's a little bit woody at the bottom, all you need to do is just chop the ends off, the woody bits off, right? So you have really nice sort of clean white. Mm -hmm. Then if these bits are a bit ratty and stuff, you can take that bit off, right? Um, but you don't actually need to just, just pull off all the bits that look a bit dry and, you know, you don't want that to go into your paste because it's going to get... Um, woody and a lot of, a lot of fibrous mm -hmm. fibers um, so what I normally do maybe about 10-15 centimeters from the bottom I'll chop it right then let's process the top bits first I take all the bits that are hanging off and you can feel it it's kind of tough 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 and it starts to get a bit soft chop that top bit off this bit you can give it a good wash make I don't know lemongrass tea whatever oh, yeah. yeah 
so keep that bit. And this bit, we're going to add this into the curry later. So that's the part we're not wasting. That's the part Correct. that we often go in the bin. Correct. We're going to think about food waste and use that. Absolutely. Good. So all you need to do here, maybe just so it, it sits better in the pot, is cut into half. Take the back of your knife and give it a thumb. Or if it's a little bit bigger, get to, uh, your mortar and pestle or something yep. or a pot. Just Make mallet. Yep. Correct. Yep. Okay. But don't break it up so much that it becomes fibrous. No, because right. we want to be able to fish it out of the curry right. later, right? So this goes those. into there later. And then in terms of this bit, you can remove this outer layer, all right? Because it's, it's, it's a little bit kind of um, leathery. Tough. Yeah. So we're going to pop that in the bin. And if you have a really good, powerful um, food processor, you don't have to chop this super finely. But I think most household food processors, you need a bit of help. It's better to err on the side of caution, isn't Correct. it? Because we want this paste to be nice and smooth. Don't Correct. We? So just really finely slice it. And you want to slice it this way because then you're breaking the fibers. Okay. Yeah. All right. So just finely chop. Okay. All right. So now I'm just going to add this to the lot that I prepared a bit earlier. There we go. So you've given that quite a good chop. I've given it a really good As I chop. Said, it doesn't hurt, but if we don't chop it up enough and the food processor can't do its bit, we're in trouble. Correct. All right, let me get a few other bits that we prepared earlier. All right. And we'll come back and do a couple more things. Sounds good. Okay, so we've got our onions, our lemongrass, chilies, some dried chilies that's been rehydrated, uh, garlic, everything, everything's here. Oh, and here you've, you've been so kind. <laughs> You've got the, you've kind of grated the galanga, which is actually not a bad way of doing it. It's safer. It yeah, just means that, is. I was going to say the computer for some reason, <laughs> the food processor doesn't have as much work to do. No, but look, if you've got a powerful food processor, chop, chop it, it finely, fine. chuck it in, right? Now, I want to show everybody how to, um, normally what I do when I, I'm trying to work out with the chili that I bought, is super spicy or not. Yes. I take the top end off. Sorry, we processed this a little bit earlier, but I take the, the little green tip off, yep. cut that off with a little bit of white, and I pop it on my tongue. And if it's really, I'll know if it's really hot or not. And then if you want to de-seed, you can. So if it's hot, you take the seeds and membranes out. If you kind of want, you know what, I would, this curry needs a little bit of heat, okay. right? So, it really depends on you know whether your dried chili is hot or not. So it's all about kind of managing what you can take. Now, a really good way of um, the way I DC fresh chilies is I take that top off and I turn it upside down, right? And I just run it through my fingers. Sorry, I run it between my palms, and I the know. seeds just come out. Magic. Yeah, and then if you knock it, more come out, right? But if you're really concerned, if it's super hot, all those white sort of membranes, you can actually have it and just take a spoon, scrape it off, or use your knife, whatever works. Okay. Yeah. Um, shall we keep the seeds in today? Oh, go on. Let's be wicked. All right. Okay. So I'm just going to, again, roughly chop this because all this is going to go into your food processor. So that's going to go in here. Right, I might Rabada, yeah, while, well, if you can, that would be great. What um, have we got left? Garlic and cheese. Garlic and yeah. cheese, yeah. Just kind of put this in the bin. I'm going to pop that your way. Now leave these ones for later. So with garlic, just take the ends off. And you know, a lot of people kind of spend time peeling the garlic, it's all going to go into a food processor, you can just smash it, right? So back of your knife, give it a bit of a smash and the skin comes off really easily. That can go in, that can go in. Now dried chilies, uh, best to kind of cut it a little bit fine as well because you don't want pieces of, of chilies sticking to the roof of your no. palate, right? So, um, and they don't blend as easily otherwise as well. So I'm just going to Even take... after they've had a good soaking, they're still quite tough, aren't they? They are, they are. So just roughly chop it. This is just all helping the processing of the paste, yeah. So that goes in. Actually, that's a good amount of, ooh, 
Lacha and Lacha. Oh, don't you love the smell of it? I do once it's been toasted. Yeah. I don't like it too much before it's been no. toasted. No. So we have a separate video with David Thompson actually showing you how to toast blachan or yes. guppy, which is the Thai shrimp paste. Yes. So that's been toasted. That can go in now. Yep. And look, it does. It smells pungent, <laughs> but appetizing once it's been toasted. It just smells pungent when and it hasn't been toasted. And blachan is that little something that just adds that extra flavor. You have to have blachan. It's the soul. You have. You have to have it. Um, I've done ones with curries for people, um, I'm sorry, I've done curries for people that don't want blanchan mm -hmm. because they, you know, they might be Jewish and stuff and I always warn them, I'm like, it's not going to be like the real thing, but you know. There's not really an alternative, is there? No, I actually, there's a, I, I have, I haven't tried it, but apparently there's a, there's a tofu version of it. Okay, well tofu yeah. can get quite funky and feral yeah. when it's fermented. Fermented, oh. exactly. So all this goes in. Give those a rough chop too, just in case. Yep. Lemongrass in as well? Lemongrass in as well. Let's see, you go first. Alright. Okay. See, it looks, the, the candle nut looks exactly, and it, the texture is very similar. To macadamia. To macadamia. Yes. Yeah. Just remember, don't eat it raw. No, not if you want to be super ill. Okay, that goes in. Doesn't look quite as appealing as macadamia, so hopefully no. you won't be tempted. Coriander goes in later when we're Coriander frying the Coriander goes in off, later, right? correct. That's right. Okay, let me get my blitzer and we'll come back and blitz. Okay, so this is quite full here, Audra, but yep. I think it will be okay. Yep. We're making more paste than we need, aren't we? Yep, for this, rest, for, for this particular um, quantity, yes. Because we're serving two. Correct, but I always say it's much better to make a larger portion of paste, cook it off, and then you can portion the paste then. Right. So when you're ready to actually make another, you know, you've had such a delicious meal today, you're going to make it again for next week. It's so easy. It's done. It's literally half the time you don't have to do this. So And it freezes very well after it's been cooked. And it's hard to make it in a smaller quantity. It's yeah. hard to scale curry paste down. It All is. Right. Let's give this a blitz. <laughs> You are going to have to give it a few scrapes down, even if you're using a bigger processor. Yeah. And we want to get it nice and fine, don't yeah, we? Yeah, we Sorry, do. I'm taking over here, Chef. No, no, no. Go for it. You're doing a fine job. All right. Um, I don't know if you guys can see, but generally what happens is that the dry chilies will kind of surface around the, the top circumference of the, 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 the piece. So... You want to really get those in and blend it really well. So we need to give it a few good scrapes yeah. down. It may get into your eyes and the back of your throat as well. <laughs> Put a mask on. <laughs> well, we've we all go. got those now, haven't we? I know. You don't know what to you do with them anymore. <laughs> well, use them in the kitchen. There yeah, we go. There you you go. keep going, Jerry. Right. So, uh, what I sometimes do is I pick it up. These handheld ones are really easy for doing that, and I shake it. <laughs> So you get a good mix, right? And then yeah. Some people like adding oil. I know a lot of Asian people really love adding oil to their paste, but I don't. Because I find it doesn't I find it doesn't blend well and okay. then it starts to really fry it. Um, but and we put oil in the pan in correct, the moment, right? Correct. Um, if you add water to this, by the way, which some people do, and you think, oh no, I need to actually add water to help it help it along, you really don't because the onion has so much moisture. Uh, whatever liquid you add in, you've got to cook it off. So we're going to have to be at the stove yeah. for longer if we add liquid. So Correct. if you absolutely have to, you will, but try and avoid it. Okay, that's it. We're ready. All right. We so there we go. You can see... That beautiful colour comes largely from yeah. the fresh chilies. Yeah, and the um, turmeric. Of course. Yeah, the and turmeric gives it that really nice orangey yellow, yellow kick. It smells great. Yeah. And you just want to get it as fine as you can. So we're going to cook off the whole of the curry paste and then freeze half of it, right, Audrey? Yes, that's, cr that's correct, yeah. So medium-high heat. Yep. There's your oil. Now with this curry paste, you don't actually have to wait for the oil to heat up. Okay. Because if you do and you put liquid in there, you know what's going to happen? It's going to spit. It's going to spit. Yeah. So just pop it in early. Uh, in fact, what my mother do, my, what my mother, 
In fact, what my mother does is she cooks it in a dry pan first to get rid of the moisture and then she adds the oil. Right. Yeah. I think this is a little bit safer. We're less likely to burn it, right? Yeah. There's so, that spitting. Can you hear that? Yeah. So cold oil, pop it in and then manage your heat really well. I'm going to pop it into sort of medium low heat. This is the part where you need a lot of um, patience. Uh -huh. Yeah. So you kind of want so, it so essentially on medium high, medium high think. heat. Okay, but don't take your eyes off this for too long. You can walk away, come back, but really give the bottom a good scrape then, because you want the bottom to catch a little bit, but not burn. Okay. Right? So all that is really just allowing the the aromats to cook, all the rawness to cook. All right, Roberta. So if you see how it's sticking at the sides here, uh -huh. make sure you give it a good scrape. That's exactly what you want okay. because we're caramelizing the paste. Good. So yeah. that sticking's good, but we need to keep moving it. Correct. That's been about six minutes, Audra. Yeah. Where are we getting to? Okay. You see how it's really before it was a little bit of catching. Now you've got a lot more catching there. You can right? even see around the side of the pan that there it started to caramelize, right? Yeah. So this. essentially with cooking a piece, you want to cook it to, you might have heard this before, cook until the oil separates. Yes. Okay. So that's what we're looking for. We'll yeah. keep going a bit longer. We'll keep going a little bit longer and you will see. By the way, you can add a bit more oil if you want to. I don't think we need to. But oil also helps preserve it. So the other half that you're going to freeze. You know, there's a layer of oil in it, uh, over the top of it, and you can, it's, it's a good way of preserving it. So I'm still scraping down the sides. So guys, it will depend on the pot you use, how long you, how long this takes, yeah? So we're looking for the oil to separate, we'll yep. keep going. Yep. And now you can see it? Yes. All right, so Roberta, can you see the oil sort of I can. splitting? Yes. That's what you want to get to. That's Such minimum a... point. Yeah? Okay. And okay. we're turning the heat down now to about medium? Yeah, because, you know, I don't need to work it too much more. Now I'm going to add the dried spices in, there right? We go. So we've so got our... our coriander. Yeah. So now and at this stage, a... and really just before this stage, we were stirring constantly, weren't we? We don't want to leave it once Correct. it gets close to Correct. that sticking stage. Correct. So use the back of your spatula and try and kind of tease off all the yummy bits. See all these? This is all flavor, right? I always tell them that. But we're going to use this pot to cook the chicken anyway, so a lot of this we will deglaze later on. Beautiful, yeah? But try and get as much off. You don't want it to turn. You don't want it to burn, right? So by dropping the heat, you're actually giving yourself a little bit of time to get rid of all that yummy bit that's kind of stuck to the sides and the bottom. All right, so all it needs, so if you're using coriander seeds that you've toasted, it's already been toasted and it's ground, so you don't need, this part of the process doesn't need to happen for too long. Like, you don't need to do it for too long. Just a couple of minutes. Yep. And I think we're ready to roll. Non your curry paste. We're going to use half of this today to make a non your chicken curry, your mm -hmm. mum's recipe. Yep. I've used this curry paste to make an awesome fish head curry Ooh. and there's going to be half left over so we're going to pop half in the freezer yeah. and you might even make a non-your vegetarian curry. Perfect. Sky's the limit. Perfect. Enjoy.